Hello friends. I'm so glad you're joining me today. This is the first video in a video series on my book, What We Can Expect From God Now, Seven Spiritual Truths for Trusting God in Troubled Times. I wrote this book in response to the COVID-19 crisis, which began, as you know, in early 2020 and has continued to uh, bring sickness and death and fear to millions of people all over the world including and especially in Myanmar. Now, each chapter in this book was inspired by the COVID crisis, but the truths are not limited to pandemics. In, throughout this book, I offer perspective and hope from the Bible, which really applies to all situations, wherever and whenever you're struggling and unsure about your faith or about how to handle a personal crisis or suffering in your life. In this first video, I will be reading spiritual truth number one. Subsequent videos will take up the remaining seven spiritual truths. In the conclusion, I will share a personal story about a time when I almost lost my faith. But let me save that story for later. Let's begin at the beginning. Sit back, relax, and listen as I read chapter one of what we can expect from God now, seven spiritual truths for trusting God in troubled times. Spiritual truth one, remember your limited ability to understand the will and ways of God. Take what God offers. Where is God? Why isn't God doing more to help us? Is God doing anything at all? If you're asking these questions, that means you care a lot about what's happening in the world right now. You believe in God and you believe that he could be of great help. Yet you're confused or, or frustrated or just scared. You're not perceiving God's presence or help as much as you need or expected it, and you want more. I often feel that way, and that's when I find myself leaning on the spiritual truths found in Scripture. These truths are as relevant today in these troubling times as they ever have been. So listen again to spiritual truth number one. Remember your limited ability to understand the will of and the ways of God. Take whatever God offers. If we examine our expectations for God carefully, most of us will discover that we expect God to act in ways that fit with our ideas and our desires. They may be prompted by something we read in the Bible or something we heard a preacher say, but upon close inspection, many of us are wishing and hoping for God to do something that we want him to do. And what happens when God doesn't come through as we expected? Well, we're easily hurt or confused, distressed, and even become angry. So the question becomes, is God to blame? Or could it be our faulty expectations? Biblical writers repeatedly tell us that we should not be so surprised when God does not meet our expectations. The reason is simple. You and I cannot know or understand the mind of God. And God is often at work in ways that are unseen and can only be discerned in retrospect. What we need to understand. Through the prophet Isaiah, Yahweh, the Lord God, explains to Israel that God's ways are not our ways. He writes, and I'm going to be reading Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah is saying that we must give up 
trying to understand the perplexing or surprising things that God does or doesn't do. Instead, we should focus on what we can understand and what we can benefit from. In this particular context, Isaiah is talking about God's desire to meet their core spiritual needs. Though Israel might not be able to grasp God's reasoning for how he was working in the world, they could benefit from God's love, mercy, and grace if they reached out to God for what he had to offer. They could repent of their sins, and they could let God satisfy their deepest spiritual needs and longings. He writes further, and this is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor and what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. In times of distress, we may be so preoccupied with our fears and desperate longing for help that we miss out on what is available. As long as we cling to trying to get what we cannot have, be it answers to unanswerable questions, guarantees of safety, assurances of health, or something else that is very important to us but beyond our reach, we will remain in turmoil and be unsatisfied. If instead we leave aside what we cannot understand and focus on reaching out for what is within our grasp, we will experience greater inner peace. We will become better prepared to face our troubles and will start to see better how God is at work in us and through us for good. Let Jesus open your eyes. In the New Testament, we find the story of Jesus meeting two disciples on the road to Emmaus. The last they knew, Jesus had been crucified, died, and was buried in a tomb. So many of their hopes for their lives and future had suddenly, in a matter of a few days, crashed and burned. Sound familiar? However, what they did not know and they could not see is that God was still very much at work in the midst of their crisis. Jesus had actually already been resurrected. God had inaugurated an incredible plan to bring salvation and hope to the entire world through Jesus' death and resurrection. Yet they could not see that. They were so swallowed up in their grief, they couldn't recognize Jesus when he appeared to them on the road. Luke says, when Jesus asked them what they were discussing, they stood still, looking sad. In this time of crisis and uncertainty, beware of getting stuck on the road of life stopped in your tracks with downcast faces, supposing that all is lost. When life's events just don't make sense to you, and you cannot imagine how God could be part of what is happening, remember the limitations of your ability to grasp God's ways. God may be up to something that you cannot even imagine, let alone understand. Now, I'm not saying that God caused COVID-19 or that everything is going to turn out okay for everyone. It's not. But this story reminds me of what Isaiah told us. God's ways are not our ways. God often surprises us 
over and over again in the Bible, we read that God is at work in seemingly hopeless situations to bring good out of evil, loss, disaster, and suffering. The story of the sad disciples on the road to Emmaus who could not see the risen Christ standing in front of them reminds us that we all need Jesus to open our eyes. On our part, we need to look for Christ in the midst of the, of the crisis, in places and in ways that we wouldn't expect him to be. Spiritual application. <clears throat> By all means, pray for every need and concern on your heart. Because we never know when God may choose to use our earnest prayers to bring about some healing, deliverance, provision, or some other badly needed help. But if your prayers aren't being answered in the ways that you expected, don't be discouraged. Don't stop reaching out to God. Ask Jesus Christ to open your eyes to see what you cannot see on your own. And ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen your faith and use you for good in the midst of this present crisis. And no matter what happens, don't forget to seek what you know is for sure being offered to you by God. Repent of your sins. Let go of your attachments to what cannot satisfy or what distracts you from God's will for your life. Seek God's grace, mercy. Seek the spiritual food that money cannot buy. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live, says your loving, merciful God. Well, that's it for spiritual truth number one. And soon, and I hope you will join me again for the next reading of spiritual truth number two. But in the meantime, think about these words of scripture that we read today. Think about the hope that's held out to you through the Bible and, and through faith in Jesus Christ. Ask God to do inside of you what you cannot do in your own strength. And you will see God do wonderful things. Well, until the next time, Peyatikin Kaunji Pebaze. May God bless you. Amen.